قال ابن القيم رحمه الله إن الشريعة مبناها وأساسها على الحكم ومصالح العباد في المعاش والمعاد وهي عدل كلها ورحمة كلها ومصالح كلها وحكمة كلها فكل مسألة خرجت عن العدل إلى الجور وعن الرحمة إلى ضدها وعن المصلحة إلى المفسدة وعن الحكمة إلى العبث فليست من الشريعة Existing Muslim family laws and practices are no longer in line with the ethos of Sharia, which is justice and goodness. These laws and practices are informed by concepts inherited from classical jurisprudence, which were produced in a context in which justice did not include the notion of gender equality. This is the main finding reached by our previous research initiative on Kiwama and Wilaya, two concepts which are commonly understood as sanctioning men's authority over women. You can read more about this research which investigated the root causes of gender inequality in Muslim legal tradition by reading our book, Men in Charge. Through our new initiative, we embark on the task of reconstruction. We seek solutions and possibilities for developing ethical and legal frameworks for Muslim marriages based on partnerships of equals, on justice and on mutual care. How can the science of Usul al-Fiqh help us challenge patriarchal rulings and develop models of Muslim marriages based on equal worth and partnership? How can social and historical readings of Islamic sources help in the process of building egalitarian jurisprudence? How can recent reforms of family laws in Muslim contexts provide ideas and strategies that can be used to advance gender justice? Six scholars explored the fiqh tradition along with family laws and practices from past to present. Let's join them to discover tools and examples that can be used to push for substantive change of religious-based family laws and norms. How can we develop egalitarian jurisprudence of Muslim marriage that is authentic to the Islamic tradition and relevant to contemporary Muslim realities? Usul al-Fiqh is the discipline that looks at the methodologies of deriving law and issuing ethical legal rulings. How can we revisit this discipline to address its gaps and open the way for building marriage as a partnership of equals? Navin Reda proposes a spiritually integrative approach to Usul al-Fiqh, which builds an understanding of marriage as a site for spiritual growth. This ethical legal theory builds on four principles, Qur'an, Sunnah, Reason, and Consultation, Shura. This approach gives more weight to the Qur'an than to the other principles, and the Consultation principle, Shura, replaces consensus. In so doing, Navin Reda aims to bridge the gap between the classical usul al-fiqh and contemporary political, legal, and ethical exigencies. How do we critically engage with the foundations of Usul al-Fiqh in the process of revisiting Muslim marriage? Ijtihad literally means effort, exertion. It denotes the process of reaching judgments on points of law. How can traditional ijtihad be revisited to promote equality and justice? Mohsen Kadivar proposes a reformist approach to contemporary Muslim marriages and family relations using what he calls structural ijtihad. With this new methodology, he holds that all juristic arguments on marriage should be tested against the following four criteria. Rationality, justice, ethics, and effectiveness, all according to the standards of the time. What can we learn from historical practices of Muslim marriage? Why is it relevant to read historical sources as cultural discourse to understand the question of gender equality in Muslim legal tradition? Hoda El-Saadi 
uses a gender lens to explore historical sources on marriage norms and practices. Her research shows that Islamic legal tradition, despite its patriarchal doctrines, has mechanisms and processes that have enabled women to claim rights and negotiate more equitable marriages and divorces. This tradition was dynamic, plural and eclectic and responsive to social norms and customs. How do we critically engage with recent reforms in contemporary Muslim family laws? What ideas, strategies or models can we learn from such reforms to advance gender justice? Zahia Jawaru, Lynn Welshman and Marwa Sharafeldin explore ways in which contemporary family laws and legal practices have been reformed in recent years to embrace gender equality. They analyze procedural reforms in family law, substantive reforms, and reform through other laws. Among other factors, they highlight the important role of women's movements in enabling change. Women's movements often feel the problem on the ground and translate it to advocacy campaigns pushing for reform. The wider the networks, the greater the opportunity for differently placed actors to exchange and together identify short and longer term strategic objectives in family law reform. Do you want to know more about how these scholars are engaging with Islamic jurisprudence, fiqh, historical sources, and contemporary family laws to unearth an egalitarian framework for Muslim marriages?